Hello, welcome. My name is Deanna and uh, welcome to my channel. Obviously, if you're here, you love plants like I do and you want to learn how to take care of them. So I'll be sharing with you today how I take care of my beautiful and ginormous um, red emer emerald. It's a philodendron. So we all know that philodendrons are such easy to take care of. So that's why they're very trendy right now because they're so easy to take care of. And this type is one of the ones that climb up and as you can see, it's been climbing up this moss pole and it's reached my ceiling and it's bending over. So it's time for some propagations. So before I cut this baby up, I want to talk to you about how I take care of it in case you're interested in knowing how to take care of one if you recently have purchased one. Um, it's very easy. Uh, you see here, I have it about three feet away from a uh, southwest window so it does get some afternoon light coming in through these windows. It does not get direct light on the red emerald because it's sitting right on the side and it's been very happy with this. It has been shooting up new leaves like crazy. If you guys um, want to see, I do have another video where I actually show how I made this moss pole and it was only two months ago that I put it on this moss pole. And in two months, as you can see, it's outgrown the moss pole. And uh, yeah, I knew I had to propagate it at some point. So I've been wanting to do it and it's, I'm kind of getting running behind because it's hopefully hurting, not hurting the plant too much. But yeah, it's time to do some um, propagation. So I'll share that with you. Now, beside the lighting, um, I have kept it here in my house through all the seasons and it's been doing fine with the humidity. Even through the winter when the humidity was low, it reached about 30% in my house um, and I did not have a humidifier running in the living room at all times. Very rarely did I turn it on. Um, and it did fine. Seems like humidity is not, it's not very picky in the humidity factor, so that's a good thing, right? It's not that hard. Um, I, man, this plant has been so easy. I don't think I've had any browning edges at all. I mean, every leaf is basically beautiful. Um, I have not had any issues with pests either um, so far. So it doesn't seem to attract pests very easily. Not even mealybugs, and that's the one, one bug that I do struggle with here in my house with different plants. But this one, I have not seen any yet. Now watering. I water it when the soil has reached dry. So when I get my moisture meter and I stick it in there and it measures in the dry level, that's when I water it. Before that, it, it seems happy. And it doesn't really show me when it's dry. You know how some plants can kind of, leaves kind of droop a little bit and show you, tell you that they're dry? I have not noticed much on it. It just stays beautiful, but I, that's why I know I have to kind of check it and make sure it's not staying dry too long because I just want to give it the nutrients that I need. Talking about nutrients, I do uh, fertilize it. My go-to fertilizer um, in my plant journey has been usually uh, fish emulsion. Um, and I've done the Alaska brand just because that's the one I found at Walmart and it's been doing great for me. Um, I did not fertilize it very often in winter like all plants, usually you're told not to fertilize too much if they're not growing. But this one, I wanna say it did keep growing in the winter. Not as fast as now in the spring, but it did keep growing. So I was still fertilizing it maybe once a month with very light fertilizer. Um, now I will start fertilizing all my plants, almost every watering. And what I do usually is like one teaspoon per two quarts. And that's usually, that's what my water pitcher is two quarts. So usually yeah, that's the amount that I'm, I'm doing. Just so you'll know, some of you guys are interested in that, in that information. And it's not burning my plants and it's actually I see the differences in my plants growing. I am now going to be experimenting with other fertilizers like um, I've been doing liquid dirt now when I got that so I will see in a few months how well my plants do with that too. But yeah pretty easy cheap fertilizer you can find it anywhere so it stinks yes and uh, how do I get over it? I just get over it. I, I don't know I'm not that picky <laughs> about smells. It stinks for the moment and then after I don't know, a few minutes for me, it's gone. So I don't, I don't really worry about it. Other than when I'm doing the mix, that's when I really smell it. So, so that's it. I went over humidity, the lighting, the water. Am I missing anything? If you have any questions, please let me know. 
other information to know, as you can tell, this is a very nice, it's really nice and full all the way here. There is four different plants that are vining up this moss pool. When I purchased it, it already came with four different plants. And I didn't even realize it until after I brought it home and I started counting them. Like this is one plant, this is another plant. So they actually started this with four different um, plants on, in the soil and it started maturing and growing. So I would recommend to any of you guys, if you're gonna, um, if you can propagate your plant and maybe start it off with more of a fuller plant in the base, like four different plants at least, I think you're gonna love the results versus if you just have one vine growing up, if you get the option. So I'm thinking that I'm gonna water propagate these and then um, I'm gonna probably make little plants made with four maybe, and uh, maybe I'm gonna sell them. And uh, yeah, I don't know. I wanna get started with me trying to sell some plants um, through Etsy possibly, uh, but I'm not yet. I do wanna start experimenting and shipping it with, with some friends that I have, some cousins, and see how they arrive, make sure that I know how to ship my plants correctly so that way it can be a success. I don't want any of my plants to die, I don't want you guys to be happy. So let's get started with this. Um, let's go ahead and chop her up. And it's a little painful to chop her up, but I know it must be done and it's gonna be good for it. So I do um, have my little clippers and these are from the family tree. You can find them at Dollar Tree, family tree, family dollar, Dollar General, all of them have it. But I did, I bought that Dollar Jenner to be exact. It's just a dollar and it works well. And I do have some videos on shopping at those stores for garden supplies. If you guys want to see it, uh, we can link it. <laughs> um, so to propagate this baby, we've got to cut it underneath a node, okay? And um, we're going to get started. I think I'm going to get started around this area here. Okay, so this is a node. I want to point out the fact, what is a node? This is a node. And this, this plant gives us area roots in the nodes. Not always will you see area roots, but you can see a little line in the junction. And basically that's an, a node. And usually it's a little bit thicker, just a little bit thicker than the rest of the stem. So, you have this whole area that basically you could cut it. Um, I'm gonna cut it around here. We're a little bit lower because this is not gonna grow anything anymore. Um, the new plant should grow from around this node. So I'm gonna cut it just around here. Actually, um, after some consultation, I decided I'm gonna do it a little bit lower. Um, so I'm gonna do it around here. So this is a node and I'm gonna cut this is what I'm actually gonna propagate and root. I'll show you guys. Let me just cut, pull it out. Okay, she's been chopped. Here she comes. Nice, nice long piece. So we're gonna get lots of cutting from this. So basically, um, I just wanted to show you guys a little closer. I had just cut from this regal shield alocasia, a little leaf that was I had snapped a little bit. So I cut it off and uh, I just want you to know basically the differences between a plant you can propagate in water and that has a node and a plant that doesn't. Because I know when I was just um, starting, you know, I wasn't sure what people were talking about when they said nodes. Um, not all plants have nodes and alocasia does not have nodes. That would be propagated in a different way. Usually it's separated um, from the base. Um, there's like little bulbs, I guess. I'm not sure if that's the proper word, but you can start separating it. Um, the little plants pop out, babies on the sides, basically. You can just separate it. But not this plant. Um, this one won't give us like new babies on from the ground, the soil. So basically this has the nodes and pothos have nodes. A lot of plants have nodes. You start recognizing them. Even in their smaller plant, you start recognizing the nodes. Um, I wanted to give you an example, but I'm not gonna go into that right now. But, so basically, all of this here, well, this is what needs to be underneath water. This is where we need the roots to grow. So all of this is wasted. So I'm just gonna cut off a little bit of the wasted. And basically, this needs to be underneath the water. 
Um, I'm gonna take this off. Okay, and there's another node, so this can also go underneath the water. inside it's reddish pinkish hmm, now we know why it's called the red emerald now this is not going to give us anything so I'm going to cut it down just a little bit there now I was debating sometimes I do do um, wax here on the end when I'm going to put it in water sometimes I don't and uh, I was kind of debating whether I should put some wax on it or not. I'm not going to put wax on it. And I'm going to see if it root rot hop happens. I usually don't have a lot of problems with root rot. And if it does have a little bit of root rot, I'll look at it quickly. And I'll be able to chop it off and then put the wax on there. So basically, we need this part, the node, to be under, submerged underneath water. So that's going to do it. So now we're going to get more cuttings and do the same thing. Okay. Here's a node right here. It already has area roots, so it's already starting off good. Some people also leave some plants to kind of callus over, and maybe I should be doing that. <laughs> I don't always do that. Sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. But... For the sake of this video, I was going to try to go ahead and put it in water. But if uh, you can leave it for maybe a few hours, some people even do up to 24 hours um, to kind of help it callus over, it's something you can do. I'm almost thinking I want to do this with this plant because it's very juicy. You see the juice? Okay, well, after consultation, with my director and cameraman <laughs> that's learned so much about plants that I'm so happy I have somebody to consult with we decided we're just gonna go ahead and put it away so I'm gonna do a little update later on showing you guys if this how well this does so you guys can learn through me okay so we're gonna do again this is a little wasted so I'm gonna cut a little bit of extra and leave just a little bit of a stem like we said look at look it's slimy okay do this here. Put it in here. Wow, that one has nice area roots. And I'm gonna make sure everything's submerged underwater, all the notes at the end. But okay, taking off a little extra. Wow, this is another one, right? It's a top cutting. So just leave it like this maybe. Maybe I'm just gonna leave this one like this. Okay. I think technically I could do another one here because there is a node here, but I'm just gonna leave this one like this and let it start going. Okay, so now are all the nodes underneath water? They are. Now, um, this water is basically filtered water and it does have a little bit of liquid dirt in it. Since I have it now and I know it's good for plants, so I went ahead and put a little bit in it. But if I, before I didn't have it, I was just doing water and my water propagations were doing really good. So just so you know, you don't have to have it. Don't stress about it if you don't have it. Um, so that's it. Now we're gonna have to monitor this baby and maybe every so often, maybe once a week, um, change out the water. So maybe once a week, we're going to have to change out the water and uh, that's it. Like mentioned before, watch it. If you do start seeing root rot, then you would cut off that little piece. And I would recommend putting some wax at the end. I like doing that. But uh, for the most part, a little bit of black on the bottom is going to be normal because it's bruised up. So after a few days, I do expect to see the bottom a little bit black. Maybe I can record it for you guys after a few days and you guys can see that too. Okay, should we cut more? Maybe I'm going to do... 
I'm gonna do a little more because we have four plants in here, like I mentioned, and uh, they're kind of outgrowing the pole, so I need to go ahead and do this. So I'm gonna do it, if I cut that one there, maybe do this one here. Okay, and this one, I think I wanna leave it for now. That's fine. Okay, so, Cut up a little bit of the extra stem that we don't need. And then right here. And then put this in water. I'm gonna have to put more water in this cup. I am out of my big glass jars because I've been using them for some other plants that I got from overseas but i'm getting ready to put those photos up anyhow so i'll have some more glass jars so i can separate them a little so here's a little top cutting very nice so voila beautiful little decorated decoration in the middle of your table look at those beautiful red stems of the red emerald so beautiful shiny leaves i think it's part of just the plant some of you guys have asked me what do i do to have it so shiny and the plants actually have shiny leaves i don't clean it very often um it doesn't even look that dusty and we just went through the spring with all this pollen and i have not wiped its leaves since then but it seems i don't know this one's pretty easy um when i have cleaned it and i do clean it with my plants with um usually filtered water and two or three uh melted drops of coconut oil um and that's it that's how i clean my leaves with uh, if i can find a microfiber or something a cloth towel that's what i use to clean the leaves and i think that's it so uh, next update i'll show you guys how long it takes for these babies to root up okay okay guys so here we are we are nine weeks later so it was time to go check up on those babies i have changed the water only a couple of times or so which was not very good um, from my experience right now in trying to root plants in water i'm realizing that when it gets hotter you need to change the water more often because you never want that water to get warm um, i did have an unfortunate event where some of my plants brought it in water right now during the summer because it's been so hot and i had them by a window and i wasn't changing the water every five days um so especially if they're in a smaller um glass jar the higher the risk of that water temperature is going to go higher so i just wanted to share that tip with you guys so you can keep that in mind what i would do differently is maybe put them a little bit further um, away from a window and maybe more water in it so it doesn't get hot so cold so quickly i always try to put cool water but um but my red amber philodendrums, I just checked them and they're, they're survivors, <laughs> they're doing good. Um, so I'll show you guys here. And these were in a big pitcher of water, so I think that's also what helped them. And they were not as close to a window versus some of the other ones that were, were closer to a window. So I think that water got warmer. So this is how much the roots have grown. Not too, too much. But I'm, I don't want to have them in water anymore. It's been, like I said, almost like two months. What's this? Is this a new leaf? <laughs> How cute is that? That's not even the top cutting. That's really good. But this one is, oh, that's the top cutting. Okay. And uh, here are the others. Doing good. And actually, I did not get any root uh, rot in the bottom. I didn't put anything on it, remember? And they're doing good. Like I said, um, yep, that's how they look. I was wondering if I could show you the picture of water, but it was like a, like a, uh, I don't know that you used like, to make drinks at home, like this big of a pitcher of water. So like I was saying, um, it, the water I think stayed in a good temperature, did not get warm. So just watch out with that and um so i here i have the pots i've washed them i'm going to recycle some pots so i already have i'm going to go ahead and put them in soil um, i'm going to do these so i can sell these maybe like in my local community 
the soil that I'm using is Fox Farm um, Happy Frog, and I did not amend it at all, okay? I'm just gonna use it directly. And what I'm thinking is that I might put, I'm thinking I'm gonna do at least more, I'm gonna do two per pot. So, like this. <laughs> and then let's put another one, maybe a, a medium one. The top cutting is gonna go by itself, maybe one with a small one. Let me check them out. Maybe with this one's a small one. And then, that's small. Hmm. I'm gonna put two and maybe this one that's small here. Well, see, maybe we need to do two or three because, of course, if it has more, it, I, mine, right, the, the one I cut it for had four plants in it. So we were talking about that, my husband and I, how it would be nice to sell one with different plants in it so somebody can have a nice full plant. So maybe I'll stick this one in here too. How, does, how do you go, baby? You go like this. Yeah, like this. This is just all extra. Not needed, but anyways. I'm just gonna stick it like this. I'm gonna start putting some soil in here. We just noticed there's a baby leaf right here, guys. So I'm gonna try to keep it above soil. You don't wanna bury that. This one's a little funky. I checked the other ones, they don't have any leaves popping at this time, so. Okay, let's now pull out just a little bit. Once the water comes on it, when I water it, it's gonna, it's going to. Okay guys, so our memory died and I just had to continue potting up these plants because it was probably gonna be too much for you guys to watch me do all these plants anyhow, but here are the results. This is the one that had the top cutting in it. And this is another cutting, another cutting propagation. And there's a little leaf there that is gonna, that's starting to bud already. Isn't that exciting? Uh, I was thinking about, you know, these are gonna need moss pulls in the future, but I guess that's not something I'm gonna worry about, but whoever buys the plant. And um, this is the other one here. And you see there's a little leaf budding there already, which is wonderful. And uh, so that one has two plants, this one has two plants, this one has three cuttings. And also again, that's the leaf right there. So I'm gonna keep them, I think, in my house for about four weeks or so. Um, make sure they continue growing and they look happy and healthy. And uh, that's it. <laughs> Just recycling some pots. So. That was my red emerald uh, philodendron propagation. So far, I'm in love with these plants because they're easy and easy is always great. Um, somebody, Marloka, just told me that if I put my red emeralds outside, that they're going to turn more red. Isn't that cool? So I might have to try it maybe with some of these cuttings because I think the heat outside, the humidity in the summer, and maybe getting some rainwater is going to really help these babies grow. So that's, that's something I'm going to think about okay maybe leave it in a shaded but bright and direct maybe just some morning light would be good some plants that i have out there are doing really good in those conditions so happy planting i hope you guys enjoyed this video and i hope you um, learn in case you want to propagate some of your philodendrons okay i hope you have a wonderful day as always um thank you for subscribing and giving a thumbs up i'm um, sharing this video bye okay guys so i wanted to also give you a uh, how the mother's doing update, I forgot to tell you guys, but I just want you to see that how she's uh, been growing. Um, that's one of the plants, that's another one of the plants. There's another one of the plants here, that's three, right? One, two, three, and this is the fourth, the fourth one. So they're all giving leaves, right? It seems like they're all giving leaves. Now I'm honestly ugh, not doing good at keeping this moss pull wet. Probably have to hold, hold her on here so these area roots can touch. But this is uh, really, really dry. Um, I wish I would have done something. It's just this plant's really hard to water it. Like if to, for me to keep the moss pole wet, I would have to take it outside and water it. And it's so big. But you know what? This is what I think. It came in a big,
basically a piece of wood that was dry. So if it was happy there, it's gonna be happy here. I just have to um, do better at attaching it closer. But yeah, the area roots haven't attached as well as I wish they would have attached as good as they were attaching to the other pole. But she's happy. So what I'm gonna do here is just give her a hug here. And <laughs> okay, I'm gonna have to probably break another piece. Ugh, she's too okay. I need to get her another piece, but anyhow, guys, I just wanted to show you guys. Um, she's still here, she's still beautiful, and yeah, okay. Have a great day again. Bye.